is the second video for CFD from scratch where we'll be implementing the lid driven cavity problem for two dimensional and compressible flow using Python. Um, last time we talked about the governing equations and we derived those and then in this video we'll talk about some details of pressure. So the equations that we derived last time for mass, momentum, and energy are shown here. These are in integral form which is convenient for a finite volume formulation. Uh, these are three equations in the unknowns of density, velocity, and energy. And then we add to that an equation of state, such as the ideal gas law to relate to pressure, a thermodynamic relation to relate energy to temperature, and then constitutive relationships to relate the heat flux and stress tensor to the quantities that we're solving for. So um, uh, we don't want to forget the boundary conditions. Um, We'll specify those a little bit later as we start to uh, code up the results. Now these equations are the compressible flow equations and pressure waves are solved as part of that solution and they move at the speed of sound which is 347 meters per second in air at one atmosphere and 300 uh, Kelvin. So that these equations as they're written are perfectly good if we're solving flows that are high speed, high Mach flows, or Mach flows that have uh, velocities that are similar to the sound speed. However, if we're solving, as we often are, uh, flows at lower speed, then the sound waves have little or no impact on the flow. And um, uh, in those cases, we would call the flow incompressible, meaning that the velocities that we're dealing with really don't impact um, or the velocities that we're dealing with cause pressure and sound waves that really don't impact the thermodynamics of the flow. And we can look at that in some more detail by considering the Bernoulli equation. So if we ignore gravity then the Bernoulli equation says delta P over rho um, uh, plus delta V squared over 2 is a constant so we can rewrite it like this and uh, here we'll just look at um, pressure relative to stagnation. So we'll just take delta V uh, as velocity and write this as V squared. A lot of flows have velocity zero somewhere in the domain. And if not, then we can just consider this um, uh, these pressures relative to the changes in velocity anyway. So the um, Sound speed is defined as, sound speed squared is defined as gamma P over rho, where gamma is the ratio of heat capacities, C sub P over C sub V. For air, this is 1.4 and is pretty constant. And then the Mach number is defined as um, V over C. So if you put in these substitutions, you can write delta P over P is equal to gamma over 2 times the Mach number squared. And this shows that pressure fluctuations compared to the absolute pressure uh, are of the order of the square of the Mach number. So if the Mach number is fairly low, uh, then the pressure fluctuations are, are going to be fairly low. So if the velocity is 100 meters per second, then P over 1 atmosphere is only 6%. So pressure fluctuations will be 6% of the total pressure. And um, 100 meters per second is 233 miles an hour, so that's pretty fast, and that's for a Mach number of 0.288. Uh, if your sound speed is, if your velocity is the speed of uh, sound, then the pressure fluctuations are 70%. So you can see that fluctuations due to pressure waves through the domain are, or rather, fluctuations due to velocity changes on the domain uh, are pretty significant. Uh, if you go to lower speeds, of course, if the velocity were uh, 10, then you'd have a much lower dependence on these uh, pressure fluctuations. Um, so we generally say that the Mach number is, or that the flow is incompressible if the Mach number is less than about 0.3, and that's because the pressure fluctuations go with the Mach number squared. So 0.3 squared is less than 10% uh, variation. Now, um, incompressible do, is not the same thing as constant density. When we say incompressible, what we really mean is uh, velocity, the 
velocity field is causing, if the velocity is low enough, then changes in velocity don't cause significant compression of the flow. It doesn't mean that the density is constant. You can have variable density, for example, if you have um, combustion with heat release or if you have different gases that are mixing together, that can cause changes in the density if the gases have different molecular weights. And so either of those can cause uh, variable density, but the flow would still be incompressible if the velocities are low enough. So again, for low Mach flows, low speed flows have little or no impact on the uh, thermodynamics of the flow. But if you're solving the problem with an unsteady explicit flow solver, which is common, then we're required to take time steps that are based on the smallest time scales. Here, those correspond to acoustic waves, so C being the sound speed velocity, and that will normally be overlaid on the uh, flow velocity. So this causes um, significant acoustic stiffness, and we say that a problem is numerically stiff if we have to take time steps for stability that are much smaller than we need for accuracy. So for us, time steps for accuracy are going to be, if the acoustics aren't affecting the flow at low speed, then um, time steps for accuracy would be based on the flow speed but time steps for stability have to be much smaller because we have to take time steps based on the acoustic speed. And the acoustic speed is much faster than our flow speed. So for example, for some CFL, call it alpha, um, we have the following time step requirements for a given grid cell of size delta x. So if we have a grid cell of size delta x, then we have to take a time step that is less than alpha delta x over the velocity. And this just means that you don't want to take a time step that is longer than um, the time it takes for the fluid to move across a given cell. Otherwise you'll be skipping cells in terms of the flow and the numerical method will go unstable. And here alpha is just a constant related to the, um, call it the CFL, it's related to the uh, numerical method that we're using. So the time step size based on the flow velocity would be alpha delta x over v, and the time step based on the acoustic or C scale, sound speed scale, is less than alpha delta x over v plus c. Um, and so you can look at the total, the relative number of time steps that are required to run for some time t. So the number of steps would be t over the time step. And the number that you need for uh, acoustic stability relative to the number that you need for um, accuracy of capturing the physics of the flow will just be this ratio here, v plus c divided by uh, velocity, which is 1 plus 1 over the Mach number. So the relative number of time steps that you need um, goes with 1 over the Mach number. At low Mach numbers you'll have a lot of time steps. So for example, at a, a flow with Mach 0.1, um, which is 34.7 meters per second, which is 77.6 miles per hour in air, we would need 11 times more time steps for a stable solution than we would need for an accurate solution. So you end up having to take, if you solve the compressible flow equations at slow speeds, you have to take an order of magnitude more time steps than you normally would to get an accurate solution. And obviously we don't want to do that. We'd like to have the solution approach be more computationally uh, efficient than that. So instead of solving those compressible flow equations where we had uh, energy and an equation of state, we can remove the stiffness in the problem by using a so-called pressure projection method. There's other approaches such as um, pressure gradient scaling where you can artificially precondition the system by, for example, artificially changing the sound speed. And that's um, possible up to a certain extent. Uh, this is probably a more common approach to use a proje pressure projection method and we'll discuss that briefly here. So here we have constant density Literally, we say density is constant. And that means we're not going to need an energy equation 
because we won't have fluctuations in temperature and we uh, due to compression and energy. So uh, the equations, if we ignore gravity and then divide through by the constant density, um, then we get these equations. And here we'll just call tau hat tau over rho and p hat p over rho. And then we get the, the equations listed here in blue. So this is the continuity equation. Differential form, this is del dot v equals 0. And then momentum is um, listed here. And um, these are two equations now in velocity and pressure. So we have two equations and two unknowns effectively. The problem is that we don't have an explicit pressure equation. So the momentum can be thought of as a, an equation for the velocity. But there's no, the mass equation doesn't give us a pressure equation. The mass balance basically is a constraint on the velocity. The mass balance says that uh, we have to, ha the velocity has to be divergence free, or which is equivalent to saying volume has to be conserved. So we'd like to rearrange these so that we get an explicit pressure equation. In this sense, you can think of pressure as being a scalar field that constrains the velocity components that are given by the momentum equations so that they satisfy continuity. So pressure is the scalar that allows the momentum equation to satisfy the mass balance equation. And so we want to derive that an equation for the pressure explicitly so that as we advance velocity, we can also advance the uh, pressure field. <coughs> OK, so let's look at a pressure equation. For convenience, we'll, look, we'll do this with, in the differential form. So the mass is del dot v is 0, and momentum is dv dt is minus del dot vv minus del dot tau minus grad p. And here we're just leaving off the arrows for convenience again, um, for simplicity. Um, OK, so we'll take the momentum equation <clears throat> and simply apply an explicit Euler integration over one time step. So we'll let the time step be h. So the, the explicit Euler, if we call this our right-hand side, explicit Euler says delta v over delta t equals this. You multiply the delta t across, and then the delta v becomes v nu, v next equals v, sorry, v next equals v previous plus delta t, which is h, times this whole right hand side. So simple explicit Euler integration step. Now we'll, we'll group this whole term here. Uh, we'll just call that h um, n for convenience. And um, we'll note that p here is written as n plus 1, but there's some details related to that. So our goal is to find an equation for pressure. And we do that by simply inserting this equation right here. We insert that into the continuity equation right there. So that looks like if you do del dot v applied to that equation, then you get the following equation for p n plus 1. So in other words, v n plus 1 equals h big H minus H grad P. So if you take the divergence of this, then div V should be 0. So this side becomes 0. And you've got H times uh, del 2 P equals a, a del dot H term. And that's what we have here. So that's our pressure equation. Simple as that. Uh, much simpler than the so-called simple algorithm. And uh, this, is a, this is an elliptic equation. A Poisson equation, and um, when we discretize this, this will give us an algebraic, a, a linear algebraic AX equals B system, where X is the pressure field that we're solving for. Um, so to advance a given step, we first solve this equation. So if we start at step N, then we can calculate the right-hand side. Then we solve this equation for PN plus 1. And then with Pn plus 1, we can apply the velocity equation that we had before, which is simply this one. And the resulting velocity that we get will satisfy continuity by construction. So you literally advance your solution by starting with an initial condition at time n, solve pressure, use it to advance velocity, then solve right hand side, solve pressure, use it to advance velocity and so forth. So you're literally just solving these two equations in succession for each time step. Easy.
So in practice, the pressure equation isn't determined discreetly like we've shown here. We'll really, or sorry, using this differential form, we'll really discretize the equations in, a, in our finite volume method and then um, apply the momentum advancement step to the uh, continuity equation. So functionally, it's the same as what we're doing, but we're going we're gonna to do this uh, application here is going to be done using uh, the discrete form of the equations. So we'll show the, the details of that um, a little bit later. Also note that this equation requires boundary conditions, and there's been a lot of discussion in the literature, even as late as 2014 from what I was looking at, how to deal with boundary conditions for incompressible flow. And it's really not, as com not that complicated. Um, some people will say apply a zero gradient pressure, etc. But really, um, if, you're, if you're just applying this velocity advancement to the divergence to get the equation for pressure, wherever you have a, a cell that has a, a boundary velocity, if you know that boundary velocity, then you use that boundary velocity instead of this right-hand side. And it's as easy as that, and the pressure the boundary conditions for pressure end up being built in without having to make any special assumptions of the continuity at the at walls, for example, or dealing with um, uh, the equations uh, explicitly. So um, as we implement those, those details will become more clear. Okay, so that's the summary for uh, pressure. And uh, the next video will uh, discuss the finite volume formulation um, of these equations.